Hi YouTube! You may have noticed that I'm dressed up as a Mazda Mario, and that's because I'm working on an MX-5. Today I'm going to be showing you how to remove the dashboard from an NB MX-5. The process should be exactly the same on an NA, even if you drive on the wrong side of the road. Now, removing the dashboard is never a fun job, but on this car it's not too bad, mostly because you can get the roof out of the way and the seats, and there's a lot of space to work with. However, I still wouldn't recommend it as the first project you try in a car. If you're not familiar with wrenching on things, it'll be a bit sort of daunting. Um, and it is a lot easier if you have a hand, especially when you need to start moving some of the bigger parts out of the way. Well, time to get to it. I'll show you things as I get to them. And the first step, as always, when working with airbags, is to disconnect the battery from the car. Whenever temporarily disconnecting a battery, always make sure you unhook the negative terminal. Getting the seats out of the way is pretty easy, but sometimes it helps to have a hand. There are two bolts up the front and two bolts at the back. To be able to access them, you'll need to be able to slide the, the seat forward and back. I like to do the front ones first, because as I slide it, the rear ones will hold in place. The bolts are 14 millimeters, and having an extension will make it a bit easier to reach the position. Once you've got the first two out of the way, slide the seat forward, tilt it forward, remove anything hanging around, including old apple cores. And off we go. With that unhooked, time to move the seat. Click the seat back so that it doesn't wiggle while you're trying to carry it. We're going to take out a lot more bolts than this as we go, so make sure you have a system to keep track of where they go. For me, because I've done this before and I'm familiar with it, I'll be keeping my whole garage laid out and I'll be keeping all the bolts in their positions respective to the parts as they come out. So these are going to go, go sit on the seat that I just removed. Hello again. So, a couple of things in particular with the NAs and NB1s. This center console is almost always broken because they just used a plastic hinge and it'll crack. Be mindful when you're taking it apart as you can make things a fair bit worse by breaking the actual hinge. That's if you're planning to keep the original style. For this reason, it's really common to change your center console from the later NBs. Um, even on NAs, you can fit the NB2 and the NB2.5 center console, which has a different hinge type which doesn't fail. Another thing to note over here is that it is very common to modify MX-5s, and every now and again you may come across some unusual wiring. This is going to make removing the center console quite a bit more awkward, as I have to work out how this was wired in. There's two ways I could do this, is I can take a photo of the wiring and unplug it, and then try and get it all back in place. And it does look like everything is hooked up to a different colour, so that may be the way. The, what I'm thinking of trying is undoing the screws up here and dropping it through the switch and leaving it all in, all the wiring connected. I'll see how I go. To remove the center console, you'll need to remove this screw over here. It's covered by this little plastic cover. You'll need a flathead screwdriver to remove it. Try and avoid using metal on plastic as it has a tendency to scratch, but in this case I didn't have a plastic sponge small enough, so I just need to do it gently. When you unclip the cover, it will stay attached to the screw. Coming out is a single piece. There's another one on the other side as well as the two in the center console. Removing the gear knob is simple as it just screws on. Sometimes it can take a bit of force. I have had to use a strap wrench before to remove them as they can be done up excessively tight.
I was able to remove the fittings holding these in and decided to take them off without changing the wiring just to make things easier for myself. Normally removing this is quite easy, you just get a plastic spudger under the back of it and you lift up and it'll pop out and you pull back. That's it. I now have all the screws out and I've got them stored in here, so I will gingerly get this to move. Unless, I've got one more just in there. Try again. So it is lightly clipped up the front, so it may just take a bit of a poke, and then you pull it off the back here, and that's it. With that out of the way, there will be two screws down the bottom of the instrument cluster, I suppose, the, the um, accessories. Just two here. You won't be able to see them from there, so I'll get another shot, but I undo those and then I'll pull this forward. With the two screws out, you gingerly lever this forward, it is clipped in, and it will unclip. Work your way up, don't try and pull it in one go or you will snap it. With that unclipped, you will need to remove the clip on the back of the cigarette lighter. I decided to remove the stereo off screen. I wasn't familiar with how it was fitted and it took a little bit of screwing around. So I decided to faff around with it a bit and just get back to the point. Before I remove this, I have to unhook it from the controls buried inside the dash. The easiest way to do that is to get the steering wheel and glove box out of the way. The glove box is easy. You open it, you have a good look at which side clips in, which is, for me, on the left side. And then you give it a yank. Once unclipped, just pop it out. So these cables won't be in a normal car, they run round to the back of the stereo. Usually removing the steering wheel and airbag is quite straightforward. This one however has a broken aftermarket cruise control system, so I'm not sure what's going on behind there, but I'll work it out as I go. Our first step is to get the rubber covers on the back of the steering wheel, you'll see them quite clearly on the back, pop them off and that will give you access to two bolts which look like they're eight millimeter so that you can undo this the airbag and pull it out so i'll grab a couple of eight mils and we'll see how we go it's larger than an eight mil let's try ten that's the one ten mil They can often be quite tight, so it's a lot easier to remove with a socket set than a uh, screwdriver, as you'll need a bit more torque to undo them. They do hold a bomb in front of your face, so they need to be quite sturdy. Those out of the way, the airbag will just pop off. They do have a rather unusual clip on the back, which I do frequently forget how it goes on, but you just unclip that. There's a tab on the back, which may not be entirely visible, but you push that up and it'll lift, and then it unclips. And now I have an explosive. You'll notice I now have a breaker bar and a 21 millimeter socket. This is to remove the bolt in the center of the steering wheel. If you wanted to replace your steering wheel, this is the same process. We will undo this, pull the steering wheel forward, and that should be it. There's one more clip I'm just going to undo here before I do that. So that's the ground pin for the steering wheel assembly. 
which is connected to the clock spring at the back. Now from memory, the clock springs on MX-5s have a tendency to come apart when you pull the steering wheel over. So I will also have some tape handy to hold it in place. Painter's tape is a great uh, solution for things like this because it's just sticky enough to hold things in place and usually these jobs might take a day or two so you don't want it getting all gluey on the parts while you're doing other things. So I'm going to keep that handy if that next spring comes apart. This is definitely a job that is made a lot easier if someone can hold that steering wheel steady for you. There we go, that's a bit better. I used the extension to give myself a bit more clearance and that made things a lot smoother. The nut is a nylock nut which means you'll never be able to undo it with your fingers. So. Nice ratcheting spanner will make the job a lot easier. Once you get past the nylon, it will come off. The MX5 steering wheel doesn't have a center marking on it, which can be really annoying when you go for reassembly and you put the wheel on the wrong spline and then need to adjust it. So I'm just going to use a sharpie and mark the center point before I dismantle it, and the uh, that way I know when I'm putting it back together I can line the bolt up on the spine correctly. You can also use a paint pen if you're so inclined, but the Sharpie works fine. Now I'm not 100% sure how this is going to go because I've got this cruise control stalk over here. But normally there's two screws there and one at the back, so it's only held in by three screws through the shroud and you drop the shroud. So I'm going to do that and we'll just cross the bridge with this stalk when I get to it. So the wiring for this cruise control is going to be a pain. We've got to work out how to get it out. If you have a look deep inside the dash there, that module, just hanging around, doing nothing, banging away, not fixed in place, that's the cruise control main module. Try and get that in focus. So that, that's how the cruise control module is installed. Brilliant. So, I had a quick chat with the owner about this cruise control and it doesn't work anyway. Which makes me really happy because he's given me permission to cut it out because keeping this thing intact and pulling the dashboard out was going to be a nightmare and I think a lot of you will find similar issues with MX-5s of this age whether or not it's a broken cruise control system or a crappy aftermarket stereo who knows what's being done inside some of these cars so it's always good to have a clear exit strategy when things go wrong Now I've already removed the under panel here it's actually a really simple job, so it's being done off camera. It's only two screws at the back, and then you slide it back and it'll come off. But as for the cruise control, some uh, side cutters, and that was a lot easier than I uh, was anticipating, that's for sure. So, moving on to the next bit, let's remove the cluster surround, which is just, once all this is out of the way, it's as simple as getting a good grip on it, which is not simple at all because it's smooth and round, and giving it a yank. Like that. And off it comes. So that's just clipped in. So it, it's a bit daunting because you've got to pull it and it creaks, but it will just unclip. So just made an unfortunate discovery while removing this. You'll see that one of those uh, decorative rings around the dash is a bit free sailing. So we're going to have a go at opening this up and gluing it back in place. Now, 
Some of you may notice I'm putting on some different gloves. The reason is that once you get a fingerprint on the matte finishes inside a uh, instrument cluster, it is pretty much impossible to get them off. It's actually a good way to spot if someone's tampered with it, if you see a fingerprint on the inside. Opening up the instrument cluster on an MX-5 is actually pretty straightforward, but the keeping it clean is definitely a bit more difficult. There are a bunch of clips just around the back, and all you need to do is just lever them in a bit and lift. I've already done a couple there while we're talking, and now I just need to do the ones on the front. Just remove that. Now this one's quite badly scuffed up. If you have the correct polycarbonate polishes, now would be a really good time to do it. Super glue will do the job. Whenever you're using super glue, always do a little bit of a test squirt, just somewhere that you can't accidentally touch, just to make sure that you don't squirt a giant glob out by accident. Because once that dries and leaves a white mark, that's game over. So we'll pick that up. Now I'm just going to lightly drag the super glue around the a few spots on the edge. And the reason I'm putting it on the edge and not on the ring is so that I don't smear the ring by dropping it or moving it by accident. Because the last thing I want is white spots that I can't remove. With that done, put this somewhere away from your paint. Get your ring in place. So with everything out of the way, I have now can focus on removing the HVAC unit. This is held in in a couple of places and is pretty straightforward but also a little bit annoying. There's a couple of plugs on the back which are easier to access once you've pulled it forward, but there are also a couple of wires which pull on levers for the HVAC system. So these guys here, as you pull them, they move things physically inside the dashboard. That's why they've got such a satisfying clunk. Now one of them is on the right hand side and I needed the phone so that you can see where it is. You can just see in the center there, there's a uh, metal lever. And if I turn the correct lever on the HVAC unit, you can see that it will move. So we'll try it there. And they're, they're actually pretty easy to get off, just awkward to reach. So this is why you need everything off underneath the car before you have a go at it. So I'll we'll try and pull this off and hold the camera all one-handed. And it's, it should be as straightforward as actually just getting hold of it and giving it a yank. But because I'm filming it, it probably will be more difficult than that. Is. That's it. Popped off. Time to go to the other side. The left hand side is much easier to find. You can see it right there. Just give it a little bit of a generous tug and off it'll pop. And you'll see that there's a clip just here as well where my finger is. And that retains the actual line and you need to pop that off. That was on the other side as well but it's almost impossible to get the camera in there and show you when I did it. You'll see that this is the last remaining hard line, which you'll need to follow up, and you'll see it way back there. Now, there's no way I can hold the camera and unclip this one, so you're just going to have to take my word for it that you need to unclip it. Removing the HVAC unit, like all things in this car, is pretty straightforward, but it can be awkward. The reason you need everything out of the way is that there are two clips, one either side of it, hidden behind it, which you can really only reach when you can get your whole hand in there. There is this little hole on the side, 
on both sides where you can get a tool in and you can press it, but it's much easier to do it after everything else is out of the way by just reaching your hand around the back of it and pressing the clip with your finger, pulling one side and doing the same on the other. And then once you do that, be gentle. So they will edge forward and it will be a bit stiff because of the cables. As you pull it out, you'll be able to see the wiring in the back works the same as all the wiring here it's just a little press button type fitment which will let you unplug it now a lot of the time it can be really good practice to label things um, as you go I'm a bit familiar with doing this particular job so I'm not too worried plus Mazda were quite sensible when they did this and every single component has a unique plug so it's really difficult to plug things in incorrectly. So with those plugs removed, oh, that's interesting. Somehow the radio antenna got caught up in there. So with those plugs removed, you need to disconnect the harness itself from the unit. In this case, cutting the original tape will be the way to go. Obviously, careful not to cut any wiring. And as it slides out, a little bit of wire will get caught, so just be ginger. There's no need to be rough. With the HVAC unit out of the way, there is only one more thing that is preventing us from starting to unbolt the dashboard, and that is the A-pillar trim. You cannot remove the dashboard while the A-pillar trims are still in place. But to remove the A-pillar trim, you need to remove the top of the window trim. And to remove the top of the window trim, we need to remove our visors and our clips for the soft top. These are held in by screws, these are held in by Torx drives, and once they're out of the way, we can unclip it, and then we can unclip the side and get that all out of the way. The only issue with this is that the dome light has a 99% chance of cracking when you unclip it. It is just clipped in on the side, and if you're lucky, like I was just then, it will come out, but it has a tendency to get stuck, and the clips will almost always break when you undo this. So just be prepared to replace this if that happens. I don't like my chances on getting the other half of this out. Would you look at that? I reckon that's the first time I've ever gotten one out without cracking it. With that out of the way, it exposes the last two screws which hold in the dome. You will need a Torx bit which is a star style drive. They're common to get at most hardware stores, but they're not common in the average person's toolbox. You will need a T40 size to be able to undo the two Torx bits that hold the latches in place. You'll find that these are very stiff and quite difficult to undo. With that all unclipped, with that all unclipped, the next step is to remove this piece of top trim, which is holding in the A-pillar trim. From memory, it's actually quite stiff to remove, so I've brought the heavy-duty one just in case, but I will try and avoid using that because that's metal on plastic, as well as the potential of chipping the paint underneath. I do have a bunch of plastic spudges, which you can pick up in eBay kits for as little as 20 bucks for 20 different spudges, 
and having lots of spudges helps because you can start levering things off progressively so that you don't snap clips. However, sometimes it can come across smoothly, depending if it's been off before and if any of the clips are broken. So I'm going to just try my fingers first, just from one side, and slowly work my way down. And I do only suggest you do this if you're wearing gloves because there will be quite a bit of pinch as they uh, build up tension and unclip. So now, this is actually clipped into the A-pillar over there, so I'm just going to support that rather than try and break the uh, fitting. I'll clip that last piece, there we go. So that was bending with that clip and I didn't want to snap it off, so I needed to be careful. Same deal with the A-pillar trim, just start gently and build up a bit of tension and see if you can do it with your hand. And slide it out of the dashboard. So we got lucky. Didn't need to use any of the uh, trim removal tools. It's important when doing this to make sure that you don't pull it and bend because this will often snap before the clips come out. You need to work your way down until you get to the clips and actually put all the force into the clip. One other part that's in the way is the handbrake. I've chopped the wheel so I can release the handbrake and remove the covering there find some free money, pretty common. The handbrake is held in place by three bolts, one at the back, two at the front. In order to pull the dashboard out, this needs to be hanging down by the side, so I'm going to undo these three bolts. And with them off, that just falls away and there's your little switch for the uh, handbrake light. So just leave that connected. You don't need to remove the full thing, you just need it to be out of the way. So leaving it all floppy by the side there is fine. So we're finally to the point of the whole operation, which is to unbolt the dashboard. The dashboard is held in by seven bolts. There are two either side of the dash under these panels. There is one either side of the tunnel and there is the final in the center of the dashboard. That one in the center of the dashboard can be quite difficult to reach so I'm going to leave it to last to show you what to do. You'll need a 10 millimeter socket to reach all of them and you will need our little universal joint here otherwise that will be impossible to reach. So I will get to it. To pop these off, you'll need your little flathead screwdriver again. And as I said before, try and use plastic unless you have no other choice. They do come out quite easily, so it's not a big risk. Just pop them out. And off we go. Turns out I was mistaken. There's actually two very large bolts in there, not one ten. So you'll need a larger socket set for a 14 mil, and you have to undo both on each side. So there's not actually seven bolts, there's eleven.
There are two 12 millimeter bolts that hold the steering column in place, which you will need to remove in order to pull the dash. You will need an extension to reach them. They can be quite difficult to remove because they're very long and the steering column is under a bit of tension. But once they're out, put some weight on the steering column and push it out of the way. Might be a bit counterintuitive, but that's what you got to do. So I'll switch back to the uh, phone so I can show you the last couple of bits that need to be unhooked. We've got a couple of um, electrical connections that we need to free up so that we can actually pull the dashboard out. Most of the wiring is actually wired either to the firewall or to a single loom up on the um, strut of the dashboard. But there are a couple that we need to unhook. One of them is on your passenger side and you'll find this yellow clip here that's to your airbag so that one will need to come undone so after a bit of faffing about i figured out that the little uh, clip that holds the wiring in place is in the back here so i'm going to try and unhook that and push that through so i was able to unclip that again. which allows me to show you actually what's happening there's a little switch here and you press that all the way in and then you can pull and it'll all come apart but obviously with one hand i can't pull on the other side the last couple of parts are over here with the foot um, near the uh, fuse box. You need to undo the hood release. There's a bolt on the back of it, which I am just unscrewing because it's finger tight. And from there, once it's loose enough, it should just pull down. Undo that a bit more, maybe. Doing things one-handed so I can show people sucks. There we go. So you can see it's cut out through the bottom, so you just need to make it loose so that it'll move out of the way. For the fuse box, there's two screws which you need to undo. And then, if I recall correctly, the last one we need to undo is this big boy here. So with this little guy, there's a tab up front which you need to push in, and then leave it out to release. Once that's out, that will unclip. Bit of a wild card now. There's a whole aftermarket alarm system in there as well, um, and I suspect an immobilizer. So I'm just going to try and pull it and hope that that system isn't wired up through the dashboard. But I think it is, so I don't think I'll be able to pull the whole unit out. But we'll give it a go. Everything's undone, so. You never pull these things hard just in case there is something attached. And you just kind of pull it forward and hope for the best. And I can feel that I'm caught on something on the driver's side. Let's see how we go. Oh, that'll do it. And that is why we don't pull hard when doing things like this. Let's try again.
So I've got two more HVAC plugs on this side. Well, with the dash out of the car, I can get to the main job for this particular one, which was to replace the carpet. The only way to replace the carpet properly is to remove the HVAC unit, which I won't be doing because it takes a lot of time and you have to dig out the system. So instead I'll be cutting the carpet out around the HVAC and uh, pulling the carpet out that way. And since that's not really the point of the video, I'm just going to leave it recording and you can watch me do my thing. <laughs> 